Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Ask Us Anything uh, Prospecting Edition webinar. Um, my name is Mike. I'm one of the CSMs here at Lead Video, and I'm going to be presenting for today. Um, there's going to just be a slight delay of a couple of moments whilst we're adding a couple of uh, other colleagues to jump in into the platform. So if everybody can hold tight for a couple of minutes, we should be ready to roll in maximum two minutes. Thanks a lot. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, sorry for the delay so far. Uh, to give you the inside baseball, a couple of uh, members of the team, members of our sales team are due to be joining us, but we've had a little bit of a technical glitch trying to add them into the webinar to be able to co-present with me. Uh, but I'm not gonna keep everybody waiting any further, so I'll jump right in. So as I mentioned before, welcome everybody along to the session. Um, the session today, fundamentally, I know a lot of people <clears throat> submitted questions in advance of the session. So do we have a short presentation that's going to run through the questions that were actually submitted in advance? But then I'm hoping that as questions come up, as anything I say prompts any, uh, any further input on your side, please do feel free to drop questions into the questions tab um, as well, or if you want to drop into the chat, either one, and I'll review them once we've gone through the other questions that have um, been submitted. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Luke, and clears us up so far. Um, so to get us started, um, this was the, the point of the day where I start to do some introductions. So my name is Mike. I'm a customer success manager here at Lead Feeder. I work primarily with our uh, Western European and, and Nordic customers, so the UK and, and the Nordic countries, so you may uh, recognize my name. Um, I now can see I have a co-host in Phil, so I'll let him introduce himself in a moment, but shortly, hopefully, Deepak, who manages our uh, European sales effort, will be joining us as well, and um, he'll be jumping in and answering some of the questions. But Phil, would you like to give a quick introduction for yourself? Absolutely. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Sorry again, guys, for, for, for the delay. I'm happy, happy and delighted to be here. Great to see uh, so many people on, on the 
on the call. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm Phil. I'm uh, just realized that my title is quite 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 a mouthful. I'm a senior business development manager. So that pretty much means that I that I support the sales team uh, in Europe, and, and I just make sure that every single uh, company that signs up with us for for our trial has an excellent uh, an excellent time and 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 use of, uses the solution uh, properly. Um, I think that Deepak has yeah. joined. Uh, so I'm going to let Deepak also introduce himself, if that's okay. Thanks, Phil. And I do apologize to everyone for the issues we're encountering on our end. So I'm the inbound sales manager at Leadfeeder. Um, I look after our team in EMEA. And uh, I'll be covering some uh, tips and tricks on how to best approach some of the prospects that you encounter uh, and leads uncovered using Leadfeeder. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. And thanks for, for joining me. Let's, uh, let's jump into some of the questions. Um, so... Um, first one up, how can I know the leads in Leadfeeder are interested in my service? Well, the simplest place to start within, within Leadfeeder to discover the answer to that question is the visit information. So what I always encourage people to do when they are uh, creating uh, their custom feeds, which we can dig into in a bit more detail, but when you're creating custom feeds, you can focus in on the elements of your, your product and your service that people could have been browsing on your site by choosing the page URL filter and then filtering on those products specifically. And then you can focus your time on seeing what those journeys were. Um, more often than not, certainly I know I've had conversations with even some people that are on the, on the call now. Um, when you do dig into that visit information, you're going to start to see interesting patterns of behavior. You're going to certainly see when they hit, for example, product pages, but you're also going to see when they've hit contact us pages and that type of thing. And when you put those few pieces of information together, you can potentially see where the disconnect was, where maybe they didn't get in touch with you, but they have browsed extensively your sort of catalog of services or, or products. And that typically when I'm discussing this with, with customers is, is the best starting point to know really what the level of interest within in an organization is. You can see in that visits pane, how many unique visitors have, have come to your site, how many times they've come back and also what their journey behavior is. So if you start to see patterns of behavior and a very common behavior is to see the same person coming back again and again as you sort of deal with a single point of contact on the client side. And then after a while, when that person comes to um, explore it with the rest of their team, you start to see a flood of new visits from their colleagues. That can be a real good sign to you of a level of interest as well as specifically what they're interested in in the visit behavior. So hopefully that, that uh, that answers that question. Um, if there's anything related to that that you'd like to chip in as well, don't forget about the, the chat and the questions pane. So if you would like to drop those in, we'll come back to those later as well. Um, next up, can I filter out the leads who are on my site for zero seconds? Uh, yes, you can do that very simply within, uh, within Lead Feeder when you come to create a custom feed. If you choose the visit length filter, you can just choose to filter it to filter see only visits that have been on your site for more than zero seconds um, as a related question to that whilst we're here the reason why you see visits that are of zero seconds so you'll see zero minutes and zero seconds and the reason for that is it's basically a vagary of google analytics so um within that uh within google analytics tracking basically if you don't see two clicks within the same uh within the same page then what will happen is Google Analytics will default to zero minutes and zero seconds. Um, so it doesn't mean that they didn't spend a long time on that page. It just means there was no other click on your site for Google to calculate the time between the two, um, between the two visits. Uh, next up, I have problems getting responses from prospects. How can I get responses? So this is a very challenging question to answer for a mass audience because it really does depend upon how your sales process works and how how frequently you typically need to um, contact prospects in order to assess interest, qualify them in or out, and turn it into a real opportunity. Um, but what I what I typically recommend is follow the old sales ad sales adage of speed being key. So if you can get to organisations that are showing particularly interesting visit behaviour very shortly after that has happened. So you know if you can get to it within a day and craft something relevant to who you think would be your ideal customer persona within that organization. Um, that, as simple as it sounds, can be a really good uh, and simple way of, of moving things forward for you. I don't know if maybe, Deepak, do you have any, any further comments on this question? 
I think it's just a question of uh, being able to follow up and then personalizing that approach. I see a, a big mistake I often see from sales teams is they, they send that same generic blank message over and over again. And especially when we already help them identify that, that sales or buying intent, they can just leverage on that insight and then be able to personalize and make sure that whatever they're sending is going to be relevant to who they're targeting. And uh, I think if I can add to that also, guys, I think speed is, is, is super important. You know, I know that if you know, lead feeder, for example, shows you a particular lead on your website, you know, it's really important for you guys to reach out to them within the next hour. You know, the, the, the colder you get, um, you know, you let the prospect be of a lead be, you know, the harder you're going to get a response. So, you know, personalizing is super important. And I think that Mike has mentioned is super important, but make sure you action those leads immediately because, you know, you have to remember that the companies coming to your website for your products and services, you know, they're in the market for a particular service at the moment. So this means that they're speaking to different vendors, they're doing their research at the moment, and whoever gets back to them, you know, quickly, uh, um, usually the first, will have an advantage, you know, so you want to be able to kind of, you know, get into the game and, 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 uh, and be there first also. So speed, I think, is, is super important in order for you to get a quick response. Agreed. Um, I'll move to the next question. And I can see loads of questions coming up in the chat. I promise we will get to all of them um, in the not too distant future. Um, so next question, how can I market to lead feeders quality leads? So the assumption there being that you've already sort of, uh, you maybe you've created a custom feed looking at quality or you've, or you've got your own metric of, of quality that's based on maybe, for example, uh, visit behavior, certain pages that are being visited, certain elements of the of the product. So obviously there's loads of ways that you could then action that information. But as an example, here's something you could do. So within any custom feed that you have, um, maybe if you follow through my example, you've created a custom feed and it's targeted at a particular element of your product that you would like to um, advertise back to that audience. So maybe for example, they've hit a brand new product that you've released. Um, they've shown some interest on your site by sort of browsing quite heavily, but they haven't contacted you so in that instance what you might want to do is export that feed as a csv and then upload that directly into linkedin's advertising platform and then start doing the type of targeting that i'm sure some of the the questions are going to be related to here so here is the opportunity in this sort of circled parts of the, of the screenshot here to to target organizations uh so we know the organization which is the middle one target them at the level that your typical buyer operates at. So if you have a sort of a ideal customer persona or a buyer persona or a typical buyer, um, that's really gonna be a crucial element of this. You can then target the right location, the right company, the right job function for whatever product you're, you're offering with a message that's, that's relevant to what was browsed on your site in the first place. So you know, if you have a product you're, you've just released, there's been some browsing interest, who would be the most likely buyer of that product for you within that organization? And then by using LinkedIn's advertising platform, you have the option to be able to target that message, target a relevant message back to them and try and drive those people back to um, back to you, back to your site. Uh, Deepak, maybe you, you have some further thoughts on that, or Phil? Yes, whenever you're running up, setting up a LinkedIn campaign, you need to have an audience size of at least 300. Uh, which means you shouldn't narrow down your target audience to one or two job titles or job functions. Try and see if you can include at least somewhere between three to five. Uh, I think that's kind of the sweet spot, and uh, that should give you enough people to go after and target, uh, just just to be more focused, uh, r rather than just be actually rather than being too focused. It's kind of opening the door a little bit more and target more people that way. Mm. And I can I can also add to that by saying that anecdotally, having spoken to several clients, sort of suggested this strategy in the first place, and then having them try it out and come back to us afterwards, we've heard great results of people being able to, uh, you know, ultimately make sales off the back of implementing a strategy like this. Because at some point, you you're obviously going to hit mentioning Deepak sort of targeting strategy there. You're going to hit organisations, hitting the right organisations in the right location. And then really your only challenge is hitting the right uh, level of seniority who could be your buyer within the organization, which again, you can specify within LinkedIn with a timely message. That can be a very, very powerful tool to, uh, to really turn this into, uh, turn it from basic leads into business fairly shortly thereafter. Um, moving on, um, 
should I tell the prospects that I'm uh, that I'm obviously contacting by lead feeder that I'm using lead feeder and uh, can see they have visited my site so short answer is you could there's no reason why you couldn't um, but you don't necessarily need to I mean we, we suggest and, and it sounds sort of almost silly in a way but we suggest in, in one of our blog articles to say something as simple as when you're contacting a prospect um, we never know when you might be looking for a new supplier. We thought now would be a good time to reach out. And as simple as and basic as that sounds, um, that has been very effective for a number of customers because it immediately gets past the why are we having a conversation question and gets you to where you need to be, which is what can we do together? Um, so that's a very simple little um, way of phrasing it that gets you to where you are. And it really is literally as simple as saying, we never know when you might be looking for a new vendor maybe now could be a good time to have a conversation. Um, so hopefully yeah, that th thanks, thanks to Amanda for bringing up this question as well in the questions tab. Um, this is a very cultural thing. So in the US, traditionally, people are very receptive to these kind of questions. They're happy to, um, to kind of answer, you know, when, when we reach out to them and let them know we found you using Lead Feeder, they're open to the idea, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. What, what tool did you use to get in touch with me? Uh, whereas people in Europe traditionally get creeped out. So it, it's a very cultural thing. It might work somewhere and might not work elsewhere. It's just a matter of uh, treading carefully. You don't want to creep uh, your, your ideal customer profile and that's going to just immediately shut the door for you. Yeah, and you know, I guess if if you if you if you're not scared to to creep out your your, your prospects or your leads, you know, uh, you know what what Mike mentioned is quite it is is what we teach as an indirect approach. So you know, to be super direct about it, you know. But if you want to be direct, you could say something like, uh, you know, I, I can see that you know you, you guys have shown some interest on our website. You know, I was just wondering, are you the best person to speak to? Could you direct me to the right person, for example? So you don't have to specifically say we use Lead Feeder. We can see you on our website. You know, you can just uh, be broad about it, but be quite direct about it also, if you want. So, uh, as Deepak mentioned, it is a cultural thing, and you can test out both. Um, you know, there's no wrong and, and right answer. Really. Nice. Um, jumping to the next question: What are the first steps a sales team should do within Lead Feeder? What should be set up? Um, it's going to be that that old theme again, which is um, custom feeds. So, um, and again, I know some people on the on the call here have um, sort of had calls with me before discussing exactly this subject. And and usually, the first starting point should be figuring out what it is that your salespeople typically qualify leads based on, and applying those filters quite simply to the to the leads. So, the most commonly used filters for this purpose are uh, country. So to obviously get you to the right territory of the member of the team who's following leads up. Page URL to target specific products that maybe they're focused on. Employee count to look at the size of the organization. Maybe you have a sweet spot of maybe five, uh, 50, 200, 500 uh, employees for your product to be a good fit for that organization. That's a good place to, to start. Um, and then on top of that, you could choose industry perhaps. So maybe if you're targeting very, very uh, targeted into a particular industry, you could filter on those as well. If you combine those four filters to get you started, you're probably going to end up with a very um, good starting point effectively for what leads those salespeople should then take forward. Um, and then depending upon who's doing this setup, maybe if you're um, looking at this from a sales management perspective, Maybe you would also try to consider straight away implementing your or integrating your CRM. So if you work with any of our main CRMs, which are and Phil and Deepak will correct me here if I if I miss any, but HubSpot, PipeDrive, Salesforce, Dynamics, uh, Web CRM, and one more that's now uh, escaped me, but Phil will jump in Zoho. in a second. Zoho, there you go. Um, if you have one of those systems, I'd highly recommend implementing that straight away because then from a, from a simple functional perspective you can immediately see what's going on with leads and also whether those leads already exist in your sales funnel who's following them up and what the tasks are that they're working on um and then you're able to immediately again from a management standpoint jump in and create new tasks and create new opportunities within the lead feeder lead pane just by implementing your crm and then you're driving actual sales activity off the back of these leads immediately any further thoughts on that philo deepak no, I'm kind of covering something very similar at the end. I think there was one question that was very similar, so I'll, so I'll expand on that a little bit more later, if that's okay, guys. Okay, great. 
Yeah, I think um, those are some really good data. And points, I think this Mike. is the point where I hand over the uh, the mantle to you, Phil, to look at uh, this LinkedIn question. Correct, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Obviously, you know, for some of you guys that haven't used Lead Feeder before, you know, Lead Feeder is a tool that allows you to to see the businesses visiting your website and what exactly they are doing in your website, how long they spend on your website. But you know, you don't know exactly who has been on your website, so you have to be, obviously reach out to you know those leads and those prospects, and you know, there's different tools. Um, for, for us to be able to do that, and LinkedIn is, is one of one of those. So you can use LinkedIn for your prospecting, but first, before doing that, you need to make sure that you know the type of you know um, people that you're trying to sell to. So just to give you an example, you know, at Lead Feeder, we mainly sell to marketing and sales um, people, so sales managers, marketing managers, CMOs, sales directors, etc. So we would use LinkedIn to be able to prospect and find those those uh, particular contacts on LinkedIn. If you don't have a sales navigator um, you know, uh, license, you can use uh, the advanced search in LinkedIn, or you can use, for example, the Boolean search um, tactic you know, in the search bar. If, if you guys are not familiar with that, you know, just Google Boolean search for LinkedIn. It's pretty, 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 pretty simple to do. And you will then be able to kind of narrow down your, you know, your buyer, the people that you want to sell to, Using using that. On top of that, you know, um, you know, social setting is is quite a big thing. So to be able to build relationships and engage with with your buyers, LinkedIn is always a great great tool. Um, but coming to Sales Navigator, I think we, we uh, you know, Sales Navigator is a great tool. I, I always say that it's it's a it's a nice to have. I don't think it's it's a must have because you re usually have pretty much all the information on on LinkedIn. But we have an integration with Sales Navigator. So if you have a uh, lead feeder license and you use um, sales navigator on the team and enterprise license we have an integration with that and what sales navigator allows you to do is is basically you have a more kind of powerful um, uh, filtering system where you can you know narrow down your buyers a little bit better so you can narrow down based on functions based on titles etc 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 and we have an integration with those guys so if you use Sales Navigator within the lead feeder tool, you are actually able also to email um, contacts directly through, uh, through, through lead feeder. Um, and if you don't have an integration, you can also use uh, you know, the Sales Navigator uh, portal on the LinkedIn platform to basically email someone. So if you email them, what happens is you know, they basically get a message in the inbox directly. So technically, you don't have to have an email address. If they are on LinkedIn, you can send them a message and also you know, connect with them and send them something more personalized. Um, yeah, anything you guys have to add on, on this, Mike or, or Deepak? Nothing for me, I think that's pretty good depth. Great, okay, perfect. Next question, please, Mike. Yeah. This Perfect. One, I so I know this has been brought up uh, consistently throughout, throughout the comments, and it's a perfectly valid question. You're prospecting a company, a big company comes in, let's say Microsoft as an example, thousands of uh, thousands of employees, uh, they visit your site, where do you go on from there? You know, there's hundreds and thousands of employees that they have who we don't know who's visiting. At no point can we show you exactly who's visiting unless you're using MailChimp, and that's something that we can cover later on, but at no point other than that, we can't show you exactly who is visiting. So, you know, where do you go from there? You have such a big company visiting, you only have the location, but Mike, if you can just take it to the next slide. Yeah. Cool. So we show you, obviously, the company, you have that, you have the exact location where they're accessing from, so that's two touch points. Ideally, a good sales rep and the marketing team should have made it pretty clear if, if both sales and marketing are perfectly aligned, are not siloed, which is pretty common as companies grow anyway, but if they're aligned, ideally, you should have figured out who you're selling to. If, if, you, if you haven't, then we have an underlying problem, and, and that's a different story. Uh, but you at least should know who you're selling to and that level of seniority. So if you can tick all these boxes, just a question of as Phil mentioned earlier, you don't need Sales Navigator. You can just go on LinkedIn's basic advanced search, just input these details, and that should already give you three or five different people that you can at least go after. So we already provide the company name, we show you the location, you already know what they've been looking at on there, and then based on that, you can target people out there. Since you don't know who you're targeting, Mike, if you can just jump into the next slide. Cool, so you don't know who's visiting, at the end of the day, it's an educated assumption that you're making. So I know, for example, that our marketing content and collateral is on spot. 
90% or above of the time, I can guarantee that uh, the training calls and demo calls that my team will take will either be with someone in marketing or sales. I can make that assumption because our content is very targeted and only drives people who are gonna be interested in those topics that we cover in our campaign. So if your marketing content, if your website is targeted and is niche to your ideal customer profile, you will be able to make that assumption. And if you know who you're selling to and based on what they've already been, been looking at on the website, you can assume that it is your ideal customer profile visiting your website. Furthermore, um, if I were to take these companies away from you, how would you prospect? I come from a very hardcore sales background where in my former sales roles, all I had was an Excel file with names of companies that I was told that we wanted to have as clients without knowing whether they were really interested in what we were selling. Did they even have a need? Was it really the right time? All I was given was arbitrarily a random list of companies that the company that I was working for wanted to have as clients. And I was cold calling these companies day in and day out, spending almost half my day trying to figure out, first of all, who to call. And then it was a matter of trying to pitch to them something that they may have never heard of, may have never even inquired for, and probably didn't even need. So at least if you know what companies you should be going out for and you know who you're selling to, it should be a piece of cake to reach out to them, just tailoring that outbound messaging, making it relevant for them. And I think Deepak, just to sort of tack onto the back of that, obviously lead feeder is a product that we use internally as well, right? So we're, we're targeting Absolutely. the that show interest in in us as a as a as a product, and and we follow that that same approach, and that's what sort of I mean, obviously it would, but that's what's driven a lot of the the growth that we're seeing as an organization as well. Right. I mean, traditionally, the way sales environments are in B two B companies, it's flawed. It just doesn't work. You know, forty percent of an average B two B sales rep's time just goes into figuring out who to call. It doesn't mean that person at the end of the day is going to be interested, but you're just trying to work out who to reach out to. We're making that a lot easier. So again, if you don't know who to reach out to and what to tell them, if, an, if a sales rep gets this data and they don't know what to do with them, maybe they should question their careers. Maybe that sales is not the right, right uh, career path for them. I, honestly, that, that, that's really what it is. Okay. Strong views there. Next up yeah. <laughs> as well. Phil, are you oh, going to be uh, yes. going through this? Sorry, so absolutely, yes. That's, that's my question. What's the best content for an initial email to the contacts who viewed your website? I think that's a great question because, um, you know, I always say one of the favorite kind of feature of, of Lead Feeder for me is is, uh, is the ability to see the visits, you know, exactly what your, your contacts have actually viewed on your website. So we show you the page you have viewed, how long we have viewed, how many people have viewed there and even how it came to, to those pages of it, um, of it coming organically for some paid uh, campaign, et cetera. But going back to the question, you can really um, narrow down you know, that answer by basically having a quick look at, at what they are looking at you know, on your website. So for example, uh, you know, if we go back to you know, this idea of, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? Um, direct and indirect approach. If we go back to the, the idea of indirect approach, if a company comes to our website and starts looking at the pricing page, for example, okay? So usually what I would send them back, you know, is something like, you know, the return on investments calculator, the ROI calculator. You know, I would send them back something that's relevant to what they are looking at. Or if a company looks at, let's say they were looking at, you know, um, a feature on our website, maybe the sales navigator integration, for example, you know, I would send them back uh, maybe a blog article about you know how to benefit from using Sales Navigator and Lead Feeder. So it's all ar around what are they looking at on your website, and then try to personalize that and send them content that is related to that visit. Okay, because it's it's you have to personalize your message. You can't send a blank template, a blank email, you know, to someone who has spent you know 10, 15 minutes browsing around on your website. You have this intel. Make sure you use that intel to be able to to connect immediately with those contacts on, you know, um, on email. I like that. So, Phil, like to probably to summarize that, it's if if you're noticing behavior in the visits, or you're noticing like uh, maybe even multiple visits to the same area of your site, that's that's going to encourage you a lot to actually jump in and send a send a message specifically related to what they've viewed. So, absolutely, oh, perfect. 
Um, next up, how can I use lead feeder info about visitors that are not leads yet without distracting salespeople? Was that yourself, Phil? If I was me, yeah, that was me. I, I feel kind of this is, is, is more kind of a, a marketing related question. You know, this this is a really good question too. You know, we have a powerful tool within you know lead feeder that's called the custom feed that ab ability for you to kind of customize and segment and filter some of your some of your leads so you know one um uh, kind of filter that always is used for for you know the marketing people for example let's say you have an outbound team that are already super busy you don't have a lot of resources you can't you know send a lot of leads to your salespeople, but you would like still to use lead feeder and get some insights on 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 what your visitors are doing and what type of visitors are coming to your website when you can use filters such as um, you know sources and medium and campaign for example in lead feeder in the custom feed to be able to see for example let's say as an example you spend ten thousand euros or ten thousand pounds on you know uh, google on your google adwords campaign you know you would probably like to track as a business you know the return on that and see what type of businesses and companies are coming to web, to your website when you can well you can do this with lead feeder you could set up a specific filter you know and just select you know the source and then select google cpc for example to see how many companies are coming from that particular campaign and this is you know really great insight to see if you guys are doing a good job in terms of driving the right type of companies you know if you're for example, you know, your target market or target audience is, is you know, the IT sector and you see that you're driving a lot of companies from the construction industry, you probably know, guys, that you need to tweak a little bit more you know, your marketing campaign and strategies. And this is the type of insights that you can get with Lead Feeder you know, without distracting your salespeople. Awesome. Cool. So in a nutshell, there is no Next best question. time. So uh, specifically the best time for, uh, for approaching leads, a day or time. Deepak, were you going to take this one? Sorry. Yes, Mike, I was, I was speaking over you there. I apologize for that. Uh, there is no right time to approach leads. That being said, um, you know, this is something that you should A, B test, both from a, from a marketing and sales standpoint. Marketing, if they're launching their marketing uh, campaigns and sales, you know, just their general follow-ups and out, outbound outreaches. Um, ideally, you'd want to send these uh, emails during working hours because the likelihood of then someone clicking through those emails during work, working hours would mean that you are then able to track those visits on lead feeder. If they're accessing from a company, uh, from a company network, we're able to pick that visit up on lead feeder and then we can track and see what else they were up to on the website. If, if whatever, uh, is on that email gets their attention and gets them to click on the site and go on there. So ideally, there's no, there's no right time to send these leads. But ideally, it should be sometime within the work working office hours. Makes sense, and I, and just to add something on the back of that, Deepak. Obviously, it's it's two sides to it. So on the one hand, following up leads, you know, like Deepak said, you know, ideally during working hours. But when you're create when you're generating those new leads, well, like we said, there's no great time to set to uh, to approach uh, doing your activity. But a bad time is outside of those working hours because you really want those email clicks or those click throughs from campaigns to be at a work computer so that we can hopefully pick pick them up and push that for you into the feeder so you can see what happened. Um, right. If, if someone clicks in whilst they're on the go from their mobile or whilst they're for, from their homes, that's going to register as a dynamic IP address and that's not going to be factored in onto lead feeder. So you're going to end up missing that, that lead. Yeah. Uh, next up, what is the best practice for setting up a website so that the lead feeder data is more insightful? Fill in deeper. Right, yeah. So you want to try and break your website up into sub pages rather than having all the information on one specific page. The reason I say that is so you can then track and, and dive deeper and get more granular with that data, with those insights and see exactly what is of interest to specific companies. And, and you can then be a lot better at, at retargeting them. So for example, we have, if you go on our product page, we have it then broken down via different use cases. So if I know company X is looking at a sales use case, I know that my outbound outreach message should be tailored from a sales point of view because that is what they've been looking at. Phil, anything else you wanna to add to that? No, that that's, that's, that's pretty clear. That's exactly what I would have said. Perfect. Next up, what is the best way to establish trust quickly when reaching out? 
So this is all about personalization and tailoring your, your messaging uh, based not only on the insights uncovered using Lead Feeder, but also on what someone has listed on their LinkedIn profiles, for instance, as well. So if I just jump on to the next slide, just to give you guys an example on, on Stalking 101, these are the processes that my sales team take into place before they reach out to someone. So they've seen Yako, they've, they've seen the visit carried out from Lead Feeder. They've decided to reach out to Yako, who's in a decision-making position at Lead Feeder, who, who's someone we could sell Lead Feeder to. Again, this is our CRO. Um, so what they would do is they'd look at their LinkedIn profile. Again, this is just LinkedIn Basics 101. It might not be very obvious to some of you, but, but for, the, for the most part, it should be something that, that most sales organizations do anyway. So they look at Yako's profile. They'd kind of see what he's interested in, what, what could be topics of conversation that they could use to break the ice, or something that they could send him of value that then would entice him to be able, be want to want to actually speak to them and uh, jump on a call with them. So Yako's made it pretty Dead Easy has listed his specialities on his LinkedIn profile right at the bottom there. So these are some topics that he's interested, he's passionate about, he likes speaking about. So if I were to send him something relating to those topics, it's gonna help me establish rapport with him straight away. So I can take it a step further. Um, you don't need to actually connect with someone on LinkedIn to gather the insights on the left here. So you can just follow someone. If you click on the three dots next to um, his picture, you can just click on follow. So if you, my, my approach would be follow someone first, then connect with them with those insights. So I've noticed Jakob uh, contributed a piece to Social Media Examiner, which also happens to be a news blog that I'm subscribed to. I can then maybe contribute, I can maybe um, provide some constructive feedback uh, based on what he's written. I can praise him for his work. He's always being authentic. I don't wanna lie if, if that's not the case, but I just wanna make it relevant for him. And usually people like, being told nice things about them, especially if this article is, is both adds both value to me and is of relevance to me. I can take it an extra notch, uh, more personal. I know Yako uh, is very active on Twitter. He's actively posting about hockey and basketball. Again, both topics could serve as, as a means to break the ice and the fun for hockey is intended there. Um, so again, I could, I could just talk about basketball. You know, did you catch the basketball game last night? Fin the Finland game, for example, you know, just speak about that and then get into them and then add some value instead of just pitching directly. I, I get tens and tens of messages day in and day out, salespeople trying to sell me something that I have no interest in and all they're doing is just me getting them to block them. So if you want to speak to me, send me something that's gonna add value to me. Um, and and uh, over time, uh, I, if I think you're someone that knows what they're talking about, if I can trust you, if I see you as someone who's really authentic and can really help me achieve my problems, I'll happily speak to you. All these insights, these three screenshots, took me less than two minutes to gather, which makes Yako a dead easy target if any, any, if any of you decide to go after him. That's the message. I want, let me see if I, yeah, that's the message that I would send to Jakob. It, it's, you know, fine of, with me just gathering all these insights, but this is a message that has worked for me. And this is something that I would send over to Jakob. So I kind of dissected it uh, into four different parts. So the first part, I'm playing to his ego. Uh, I'm making it, I'm making this message about him. I'm praising him for his efforts, for where he is at the moment and how we got there. Um, and, and, and I'm saying all this in a casual tone, avoiding all um, business or, or very niche jargon. I'm speaking in a way, I, I'm writing in a way that I'd usually speak. I then send him something of value, a value, of, a piece of content that I know is gonna be relevant to him, both based on his LinkedIn profile and the visit that Lead Feeder carried out on my site. And I, I point out some things that could be especially more relevant for someone in his existing role and could help him get that extra step further. So I know an issue that he might be having would be something about outbound email personalization. And I know that link could help could give him that advice to alleviate that pain point that he could be having. So that content piece gives him a good reason to care. If he finds what I'm sending to him relevant, there's the likelihood of, the, of him then resorting to speak to me substantially higher because he can trust me. He knows that I'm gonna make a difference to him and I might help out with his problems. And the call to action at the end just works as a means to encourage him, for him to open up and share more about him. And, and I've already kind of praised him enough for him to, for, for me to kind of um, become sort of a follower for him. So I, I reckon 
if if he if he I, with this kind of messaging, I reckon he'd he'd be pretty receptive in wanting to speak to me. I expect I expect Yako's inbox to to explode in few uh, in, in in few minutes. You, you've pretty much given given uh, given them the tool to to sell to to our CRO. So it's brilliant, great 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 content. Uh, I'm uh, I'm happy to send over that template to someone if if anyone wants it. Just, just ping me on LinkedIn. Just personalize your approach, please. You know, if you want some of my time, show me that you've spent at least two minutes of your time to say something different, to stand out. Don't just send me a blank connection. I'll happily send you this this template and many more that I've put together. And it would be practice. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, OK, should we move to the next one? Uh, what's the ideal cadence for nurturing prospects? Would it be the same message or would it be a variable message? That's another great question. I think you know. I think you, you guys can can see a trend here. You know, a trend in, into kind of personalization. You know, the, the, the ideal cadence really depends on, on your deal cycle, type of leads you're, you're trying to, to 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 sell to. For example, you know, we have a um, a cadence that's kind of multi-touch and, and and multi-channel. So you know, make sure that you you know if you're touching a prospect or touching a lead, you touch them on different platforms like LinkedIn, email, phone call, social, Twitter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, uh, you know, an ideal cadence is basically around your your potential you know deal cycle, sales cycle, and the type of products you're selling. You know, just to give an example, we had we are uh, we at Lead Feeder we have a 14 day free trial that we give to every single prospect that signs up to to Lead Feeder. You know, so a typical cadence for me would be you know as soon as they sign up to a, to a, to a, to a, uh, the, the trial, I would obviously give them a, a quick call if I'm able to get their phone number. You know, have a quick look at their their LinkedIn profile, see if I can see any any information that's relevant here for me to send them a personalized link, LinkedIn connection. You know, um, I will also reach out to them. You know, after probably a couple of days, so six or seven days, just to see how you get they're getting on with the trial. Do they need any help? Send them some 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 more content. Invite them to a meeting or a webinar. Um, and also, if you can gather any type of information about, you know, what the company is going through, you know, it depends on, on what type of companies you're selling to. Obviously, if you're selling to enterprise level company, maybe have a quick look at their financial um, financial statements, you know, their figures there, and any message from the CEO that would be important to add to your to your cadence and to your emails. Um, you know, if you know what tools they are using, for example, make sure you add this. Um, I mean, SaaS tools. If you know what SaaS tools those guys are using, you know, add this to your emails. Make sure you personalize those emails and make sure that that, that those cadence makes sense to you guys, because it all depends on on the type of business you're trying to close. Um, and uh, and and you know, the, the important message that you have to remember is make sure that the message is is personalized and variable. So definitely don't send send the same message to every single prospects or contact because we are different prospects and contact. Nice. Uh, I'll move to the next question, which is what is the best way to figure out who has been on our website, which I suppose is a, a repeat of an earlier discussion, but who is going to take that one? Yes, yeah, so I was just going to reiterate. So we've already established that we can't show you exactly who's visiting. It's just an educated assumption that you're making based on how good your marketing content is. If your marketing content is on game like ours, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident I can assume over 90% of the time I'll be speaking to someone who's either in sales or marketing, just because our platform is targeted towards them and the keywords and the SEO that we have in motion it will only bring those individuals to our website. It's, it's just a matter of, again, having that alignment between sales and marketing, feeding back, you know, feeding back that information uh, those insights uncovered both from a sales standpoint and working together to ensure that you drive not only more traffic to the website, but relevant traffic to the website. Hmm. And Mike, do you wanted to, to, I recall you mentioning you wanted to cover uh, the MailChimp integration as well? Yeah, I wanted to chime in with a, a couple of thoughts on that. I mean, obviously, Deepak, you've mentioned you're going to be speaking more often than not to a person that's either in sales and marketing, but then the, the, mm -hmm. maybe it's too obvious to even mention, but like, uh, there's only going to be so many people within that sales and marketing team for a product such as ours who have the authority and ultimately the, the buying power to be able to, to purchase the product as well. So that gets us to the right level of seniority in that team as well. So then we're not, that's what takes us from looking at an organization that's maybe got 10 or 50 or 100,000 employees down to something that's really actually quite fairly straightforward once you look at location and you look at the number of people who could possibly work in that location who have in our case, a credit card, but in some cases, 
the ability to purchase a product that may be quite expensive. So mm -hmm. that's fairly um, maybe self-explanatory, but nonetheless, I've, I've put it out there. Um, in terms of the one exception to what we've been talking about so far, that is the integration that we have with MailChimp. So if you integrate MailChimp into Lead Feeder and obviously make sure that Google Analytics is also tracking within your MailChimp, then you're able to see who the people are that have clicked through the um, the emails that you've sent. So then you are seeing the visits and the and the, the journey information that you're looking for, and then it does make it as simple as Deepak has described. Unfortunately, today that is a uh, that is a uh, I suppose a unique um, a unique integration that we have, but nonetheless, Mailchimp is the exception to this question. Uh, next up, how can we improve our SEO by using Lead Feeder? So uh, Phil mentioned earlier that you can create custom feeds and really uh, get really deep dive into you know what's working from a marketing standpoint at driving relevant traffic to your website. So there's filters by a keyword source and mediums, referral links. Uh, more specifically, from a keyword standpoint, if you know what what um, keywords are bringing your ideal traffic to the website, you can then tailor future marketing content to reflect that. You can then either bid higher on certain keywords that you can then cripple and, and generate better leads from, or ultimately neglect certain keywords entirely that, that aren't really you know, generating anything for you. And then if you can, based on that, work on your content to make sure it's as, it's as targeted as possible and, and keyword rich in that aspect, you'll then be able to generate more relevant leads to the website as well. Okay. Next up, uh, oh, how, how do you fully implement lead feeder within your funnel? Yep, so, so that's a pretty good question. So you wanna make sure that you identify first uh, your um, ICP, so ideal customer profile. So make sure that you, you know what type of businesses you're trying to target before you start pushing leads to your sales funnel or your, 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 your CRM. Because you know you have to be careful with it, you know, because we could, you know, potentially push every single lead to so every single account or organization that has visited your website to, to your CRM. And you obviously don't want to do that because it's just gonna, you know, uh, bring data that's not relevant into your CRM. So before you get to your CRM and to the end of, 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 of a funnel, you want to make sure that you identify, you know, the, the your ideal customer profile. So for example, if you sell into a particular industry, if you sell to a particular size of, of organization, and if you sell to a particular market um, or country, you can use the custom feed within Lead Feeder to filter those out. So let's say, for example, there's about 500 uh, companies that visit your website on, on a monthly basis. After adding those three filters, you, you end up with 100 qualified, what we would call qualified leads. So you can push those qualified leads then through automation using you know, the custom feed and the automation feature straight into, into your CRM um, automatically. So we push them into your CRM. You even have a possibility to create um, a deal in organization and even create a follow-up uh, task for your salespeople or for your outbound sales team to reach out to those specific leads. And this can all be done autom automatically, you know, taking leads from your website to Lead Feeder to your CRM. So that's how I, I would fully implement Lead Feeder within your, your, your sales funnel. Perfect. Uh, and this was a. Uh, yeah, this, absolutely, absolutely. So make sure you identify your leads and then you qualify them using the filters and then you push this into your CRM and make sure that they, they are, you know, salespeople are acting on the data. So those are pretty much the three steps that I just mentioned. And th this might sound uh, obvious at first glance, but on, fr from, from a research and a report done by uh, SlideShare, it, it's apparent that 61% of B2B marketers find generating high quality leads as one of their biggest challenges. So even marketers don't even know what constitutes a big lead. So by, sh by ensuring you follow this sort of process, you can at least get as close as to, to generating those top leads for your sales team. Cool, that's about it from the questions that we had on our end. Uh, we'll now be reviewing the questions that have been asked uh, on the questions tab. So if you have asked any questions in the chat window, please type those questions again in the questions window, just because they do get lost in the chat window and it takes longer for us to try and scroll them above. But we'll be going through those questions uh, one by one. Do you wanna get started with some, Mike?
So uh, we've asked uh, someone, Oli has asked whether we can demo the platform. Uh, we can't demo the platform today, but if you drop us a message uh, using the intercom button on the app, uh, our, our support team will be able to arrange a demo with a member of our sales team for them to go, go through the platform with you. Um, let's see what else has been asked. I know Andrew has been asking something. Let me see where Andrew's message is. Uh, we don't offer a white label option as of yet. We're still working to develop and raise awareness for our brand, so no white label option as of yet, or any time soon for that matter. Uh, Deepak, just to chip back in on that, and sorry if I haven't missed a minute there, I had a, uh, an internet connection issue, but um, looking at Andrew's question, I don't want to sort of uh, as assume anything, but if it's the case that you're sharing data with a particular uh, client of yours, and I know this is slightly perhaps more manual, but you could consider perhaps um, downloading the leads data from any particular feeds using the three dots button at the top of every feed, and then you can download both the leads and the visits if you wanted to share those with a particular uh, customer. Um, and an alternative suggestion would be maybe if you wanted to set up a Google Data Studio type connection and report back on you know the the types of leads and, and the content of feeds through GDS, that might be an option for you to consider as well. Um, and if you'd like any help on that, I'd, I'd be happy to follow up with you after the call on it as well. Yeah, and there was a question here from Anders Nolin who asked, I am a one-man uh, company. Uh, would, it work with, um, would it work with lead feeder and sales navigator? So I'm, as I'm guessing you're, you're asking if, if lead feeder would work for you. Y yes, absolutely, lead feeder can work for you if your type of company you, you, you set up is a kind of a B2B company. So if you're selling to, to businesses, lead feeder is, is, is a good tool for you and can identify businesses on your website. So absolutely, you can use lead feeder and sales navigator, but you have to make sure that you have a team and enterprise license if you want the integration. As I said, it's not a must have, um, but it's a nice to have if you have if you have this integration. If you don't, you can still open up sales navigator on a different tab and do the same thing and email people directly. You don't have to have it through, through lead feeder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's no biggie. Personally, if you're a one-man team, I wouldn't even go for a sales navigator integration. There's no real need for it. You can still leverage, you know, LinkedIn as a platform with it with standard offering. You don't need to go ahead and upgrade. I'm happy to share some tips and tricks and best practices on a one-to-one -one level. Uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't go with it for, for a one-man team. Nice. Um, Kimberly's asked a question. How can I learn more about the Mailchimp integration you mentioned? Um, we have extensive guides within our help center, which is help.leadfeeder.com, but I've also made a note that you've, you've asked about it, and I'll send you an email right after the webinar with the links to the guide specifically to get it set up and, and how it should look afterwards as well. No problem. Um, should we jump to the questions tab? Because I think we've only looked at the chat so far. Um, uh, it's, it's taken a little while to load to me, for me. Deepak, are you able to see the questions? It's loading for me as well, Mike. <laughs> okay, I can see. I can see it now. Uh, top question from Stephen is: Can we see bounce rate for visitor pathways? Um, yes, you could do that if you were to create a feed within Lead Feeder that looks at. Um, first off, you could create a feed for all, all visits that are zero minutes and zero seconds, and then you're going to see the 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 visit pathways within the visits of those of those particular leads. So that's very very simple to to do, but if you have any issues setting it up again, feel free to get in touch, um, probably directly with support actually within the application, and they'll show you how to do it in, in two seconds. Um, next question is from Alex. Besides IP identification, what are the tech you use to identify visitors? So today our um, effective tracking mechanism is using Google Analytics. So we look at primarily network location and domain within um, within GA, and that allows us to be able to identify who those organizations are, because often they will be uh, denoted in either the, the network location, the network domain, the name. Um, that's our primary method today. We are in the process of working on a, an update to our tracking that will also make use of other methods. I can't give you the sort of full list of how that will work, but things like, for example, form fills, self-identified chat visitors, and any number of about 20 or 30 other different ways uh, that this can happen. We are investigating and actively working on releasing that in the very near future. Uh, so hopefully that answers the question. 
Um, I think Deepak, you're going through and ticking them as we go, which is very helpful. Um, um, remote work is now common. Can a, can lead feeder tag it to users to tag users to a company or or lead? Um, so, if you, in the scenario where in today's tracking where an organization is is as you say is remote first perhaps like myself i'm working from from home more often than not if i was to visit your site i wouldn't be identified today but that's why we're, we're improving the tracking mechanism that we that we use the caveat though is if they were using sort of like a, a networked uh, maybe it's a vpn setup or some sort of networking in order to be able to connect to uh company type files then those we should be able to identify um, so that we're sort of halfway there and we'll be the other half very, very soon. Um, next up is a question from Julie, but I can see that you're typing Deepak. So that maybe that means that this is a question that was already answered and I missed it a moment ago. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to say, Juliet, whenever you're personalizing a message, you want to make it relevant for that ideal customer profile that you have in mind. If you know that this is the kind of person we want to sell to and we consider them relevant, they're the ones going to be buying our product. You want to tailor your messaging for them. You're making an assumption that it's them visiting the website and you want to make it just relevant for them in mind. Nice. Uh, next up, Amanda. So if I start using Sales Navigator and a company visits our site that has 50 employees, if I wanted to send an email to all of them, I could do that. Is that how Leader Feeder integrates with Sales Navigator? So sort of two separate questions. Question one, yes, you could send an email to all of them, but hopefully you would be a little bit more targeted than that based on the sort of targeting parameters that we've sort of talked about through the call. Is that how Leadfeeder integrates with Sales Navigator? No. So the functionality we pull into um, Leadfeeder will allow you to send direct messages to the contacts that we display within um, within lead feeder which will not necessarily be an exhaustive extensive list of all of the people who work for an organization so if you wanted to do what you've mentioned there i'd recommend doing that with um by going directly to sales navigator and sending those messages there yeah just just to add on that as well the lead feeder context tab that we show is just the search that we're carrying out in real time just showing you at first glance people who claim to either work at the company or are affiliated to that company. So it might not always pick up all the all the individuals who work at the company. So it's often best to just do it straight away from Sales Navigator. Yeah, and, and to add to that, in you know what the, the Sales Navigator integration also gives you is, you know, if you connect to that particular lead feeder contact, you know, you'll be able to see um, you know your your network, your connections, and you'll be able to see any type of ice icebreakers, so any any type of uh, content that particular contact has shared on LinkedIn or liked on LinkedIn or posted on LinkedIn. So you get to see that within lead feeder directly, so you don't have to actually go to Sales Navigator on a separate page to see that. So those little things are what the Sales Navigator the integration gives you um, with, with lead feeder. Nice. Uh, next up, another question from Juliet. In, in my experience, many LinkedIn contacts in large enterprises are first name only. They keep anonymous. So using LinkedIn doesn't work well. Uh, Deepak, do you, do you have maybe, maybe any comments on that? that? That's a good question. It's often a question of then expanding the reach of your network. So if you work on expanding your network, hopefully you can connect with someone that might have those individuals within their existing network. So technically your second degree connection. Um, and then that way you'd be able to kind of tap into those bigger enterprises. Yeah, if you have a relatively small network, then you'll be limited as to how many people and who you can reach out to. Which only makes sense because LinkedIn does, wants to avoid people just spamming the hell out of each other. <laughs> that, that's not the whole purpose of using LinkedIn. But I suppose that also goes to your wider point, Deepak, about sort of uh, maybe playing the long game when it comes to something like LinkedIn, so that you're actually precisely uh, you need to be calm and just be in it for the long game. So it's not just a, if if you just go ahead and message someone, pitch to someone straight away, you're just going to creep them out. All they're going to do is just going to block you, and you've already burnt that bridge. If you can just be consistent and and be in it for the long game, whereby you send them somewhere between three to five different pieces of value, content of value, sooner or later, they will come to their own terms and contact you because they can trust you as someone that they can resort to for an answer to their problems. It, yeah. it's, it's like a, leading the horse to water, but not forcing it to drink. Absolutely, especially if you're targeting enterprise kind of level companies, you know, those companies would, you would probably end up targeting, you know, the, the, the C-suites, you know, and, and those people just do not, 
engage with a, a, you know a direct sales pitch if you've just you haven't even met them and you're just sending them a message and an email and trying to sell them something you know the likelihood of them replying to your to your email or accepting your linkedin connection is very very low so yeah be in in it for the long game especially if you're speaking to you know enterprise level companies and especially if you're speaking to you know director level or over c suite for example nice um, next question up is from Amanda. How do leads get pulled into get put into a CRM? Do all the lead feeder contacts automatically get put in with emails so that we can send marketing emails to them? Um, so first part of the question, how do they get put into CRM? So there's two ways. There's either the manual way. So if you integrate your CRM and then you click on any given lead, you have a CRM box there that means you can connect it to the CRM, which means both either connect it to an existing account or create a new account one by one or if you make use of automation, you can send all uh, all leads from a particular feed that are created from that point forward into the CRM automatically. Um, and that can go along with it will have an, an assigned owner that you will choose. You can choose whether to create a deal, a task, an opportunity, how it's prioritized, and then send it straight in. Um, the other half of your question, do the lead feeder contacts get automatically pulled in? No, they don't. That's a limitation of the agreement that we have in place with the third parties that provide us with those contacts. But you are able to copy them and, and send them wherever else you will on an individual basis. So what I would recommend you would do is you would jump into lead for the contacts, find the uh, role that's most uh, relevant to, to you in that list. You can right click over the email button and then send that contact details, in, send those contact details as a comment, you click send and it will send into your corresponding account in the CRM as a note on the account level. So that would be how you would sort of solve that problem. Um, next up is uh, can you see activity for, can you see each activity of an identified lead and follow their activity on your site if you connect your CRM? Um, so if I, if I understand the correct the, the conversation or the question correctly, I think you're asking perhaps whether or not when you plug in CRM, is that going to basically pair it to an individual and then you're seeing those journeys? If that's how you meant, no. But um, if what you mean is, for example, can you see within the CRM what the visit information is and then maybe take action based upon that, then uh, yes, you can do that because you can sync the visit information into the CRM and then you can have your salespeople make sort of educated, uh, not guesses, but, but basically make an educated assumption based on what that visit information tells them. So if they see lots of pages browsed, if they see lots of products viewed, that could prompt them to follow up a particular type of uh, persona within that organization. Uh, seeing lots and lots of ticks. So going down to the next one without a tick, uh, what about gold? I think Deepak, you've already answered that. Not supported yet, but it's possible, as you've said, that it's supported via Zapier. Um, so perhaps, as I know, Amanda, you've raised a lot of questions in the course of the, the, the chat here. Maybe we could pick this up after, after the call and maybe a member of uh, the CS team, the team that I'm part of, can sort of run through some of these with you with sort of specifics of uh, what, you, what you've asked for. But my first port of call to solve that problem would be to check Zapier for a connection. Um, and unless I'm wrong, we have one more question at the top from Lissel Strauss. What differentiates Lead Feeder with Google Analytics? So we're not competing with Google Analytics at any point. We're just making that data more legible. So um, it, it, we we just in, using Google Analytics. We're enriching that data. We're taking it a step further, making it more manageable for the average salesperson who has maybe never even logged onto Google Analytics or probably has no even idea of what it is. So it's just getting that data, enriching it further, making it actionable. I think that's, a, that's a fair assessment. Um, I think then if you, if you covered the chat whilst I unfortunately dropped off and we've now covered the questions, I think we've covered everything that was, that was asked. Um, I think what's left on my side is to say, obviously thank you for everybody who's, who's joined, who's listened to this. Um, now one of the questions in the other chat pane was whether or not you'll receive a recording of this. You will. Uh, you will get a link from Livestorm pretty much right after the uh, the webinar closes. So you'll be able to listen back if you'd like. And if anything in today's session either wasn't clear or has prompted you to want to do something else, then we would be more than happy to uh, to pick this up uh, with you after the call with different, you know, if you have, for example, a CSM attached to your account, I'd be more than happy to 
pair them up with you and, and make sure they follow up any questions that you've raised here. Um, there's one final question that snuck in just before I was about to close off, which was Kimberly's, which is, do you have any best practice or guidelines for companies that have many products and many ideal customer profiles? Um, short answer is yes. And since I've already committed to sending you across a uh, an update on, on MailChimp, I'll make sure you get some other guides as well in terms of our ultimate sales guide or ultimate marketing guide. And I'll make sure that if you need, we can have a session to follow up as well and, and discuss that further. Um, and with that, one final thing. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, and we look forward to speaking to you soon on hopefully some more interesting questions like today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.